better get out of bed. I just remembered where I left my frog. I saw myself, honey, it's a swell tree house. I'd love to see it, Dennis, but I can't right now. Dinner would burn. You can see that when you help me move my stuff. What stuff? All my stuff. I think I'm just gonna live in that good old tree house from now on. <laughs> You'll do no such thing. Well, how about if I just sleep out there from now on? Certainly not. Now, you go wash up for dinner. Hey, can we have dinner up there? <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't. Can I go get Tommy so he can see it? Tommy's probably about to have dinner himself. You can show it to him in the morning. Before breakfast? <laughs> After breakfast. Can I get out and fix my own breakfast? No. <laughs> and have breakfast with the rest of us. The keepers! You'll have plenty of time to play in the treehouse, Dennis. It'll be there for a long while. Well, I wish you hadn't put it right over Mr. Wilson's back fence. The treehouse isn't going to be a bother to Mr. Wilson. We have a definite agreement about that, don't we, son? We sure have, boy. Let's write it out in blood like you did in Tom Sawyer. <laughs> that won't be necessary. I just want to be sure that the treehouse doesn't make him unhappy. Heck no. And I'm going to let good old Mr. Wilson play it at any time he wants. <laughs> well, i got to go wash up for dinner. <laughs> Oh, there's nothing like a good night's sleep, Martha. I feel like a million dollars this morning. Good, George. Are you going to put up your new bird feeder? Mm-hmm. Right after breakfast. <laughs> oh, great Scott. They finished the tree house. <laughs> what difference does that make? How can a little boy on a little platform bother you? Martha, during World War II, little platforms like that were used by enemy snipers. Well, Dennis isn't a sniper. And Henry promised you wouldn't be bothered. Mm -hmm. France promised England Napoleon wouldn't be any bother. But you can't compare Dennis with Napoleon. Oh, no? Which one am I talking about? He's small, he wears his hair across his forehead, and he terrorizes the neighborhood. Now, which one? <laughs> You're going to feel much better when you're out in the fresh air putting up your new bird feeder. Yeah, right under the eyes of the enemy. <laughs> You're not helping me with all those kapows. Sure we are. We're scaring away all the hawks that are after your birds. Hawks are all over the place. Ah, there isn't a hawk within a hundred miles. How about buzzards? No. Any eagles? If you don't stop shouting, we won't even have a sparrow. Are you all through, Mr. Wilson? Yes, I'm all through. Did you put the food in it? Well, of course I did. And now, if you'll both be quiet, maybe we'll attract some birds around here. What are you gonna do now, Mr. Wilson? None of your business. <laughs> Have you seen my Audubon bird collar anywhere? 
<laughs> I sewed the hole in your pocket so you won't lose this one. Oh, thank you, my dear. You know, this is an amazing little gadget. <laughs> attract birds to my yard, if anything will. <laughs> attracting some birds. <laughs> Attracting some old buzzard. <laughs> the buzzards don't sing, they buzz. <laughs> for you to understand, Mitchell, but I like birds. I think of them as my friends. Well, for years, I've been a member of the Northside Bird Watchers. And just now, when I want to make a sanctuary of my backyard, well, look what happened. I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson. Well, with Dennis up in that treehouse, I'll never have any birds around. <laughs> we'll just have to work it out. Well, I don't know what you can do. If he's up there, he's just going to scare the birds. Well, if all else fails, we'll just have to take the treehouse down. That's a good idea. I'll help you. I'll go get a couple of hammers and a flashlight. Oh, oh. I can't ask you to do that. Why, you just put it up. Dennis tires of things very quickly, Mr. Wilson. Maybe in a few weeks. By the time that happens, there won't be a bird closer to here than Montana. Dennis and Tommy will have kapowed them all out of town. <laughs> Maybe if you'd talk to Dennis about bird watching. You know, tell him something about it. Well, he might understand your problems and stay away from the birds. Say, you know, that might be worth trying. I don't see what harm it can do. Well, I don't either. At the moment. <laughs> What's the matter, Mr. Wilson? Some way, this is going to backfire. I'm trying to figure out how it's going to happen. <laughs> object of bird watching is to watch birds. And you can even watch them when they're taking a bath, huh, Mr. Wilson? <laughs> well, yes, but the important thing is not to scare them. Because if you scare them, they'll fly away, and the game's over. What game? Why, the bird watching game. How do you keep score? <laughs> you don't keep score. Then how do you know who's ahead? <laughs> All right. Uh, stop, stop right now. I, I used the wrong word. It, it isn't a game, it's, it's a hobby. All right, boys? Okay, Mr. Wilson. Okay. All right. Now, the object of this hobby is to see how many different kinds of birds you can observe. Now, do either of you boys have a favorite bird? Yeah, turkey. <laughs> Dennis, you don't watch turkeys. I do. I want to see what part I'm getting. <laughs> I like the leg. All right. All right. Do you want me to show you how to work these binoculars or not? Sure we do. All right. I'll lend you my extra pair of binoculars, but you must never leave them here in the treehouse when you're not here. I'll bring them back every time I'm through with them. 
Just leave the ladder up on your side. Uh, no, don't bring them back every time. Just take them indoors when they're not in use. My house or his house? Oh, anybody's house. Now, let's get started. Now, you look through the small end, and you adjust this little do jigger there in the center. Okay? You find something to look at, and then you adjust that till you see clearly. See, you got soft eyes, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> Not at me, Dennis. Wow! Is it a bird? It's Mr. Blakely across the street and a bird. Oh, I didn't know he was interested in birds. He really must like them. He's changing his shirt and he's got a swell eel tattooed on his chest. <laughs> Give me those binoculars. It's that top window on the left. I'm not interested in Mr. Blakely's tattoo. Goodbye. Where's my ladder? Jeepers, Mr. Wilson. Didn't you notice? Mrs. Wilson came and got it. I guess she was going to wash the windows. You want to sit down some more? No, I don't. I'll use your ladder. Our ladder isn't here either. Don't you remember? We came up on your side. Martha! Martha! Mr. Wilson, you shouldn't yell like that. You'll scare the birds. Martha! Smooth it out, Tommy. Boy, I'm sure glad you remembered seeing this old box in the alley. Me too. Sit down. Now we got my own personal sofa. <laughs> hey, that's just like the bird we got at home. Oh, the bird at your house isn't real. So what? They're exactly the same. Come on, I'll show you. Isn't it the same? Sure looks like it. What's the same? This bird and the one we saw in Mr. Wilson's yard. Well, I don't mean to doubt you, son, but that's an imitation of a Canadian crested warbler. Yep, that's the one we saw. Now, Dennis, if it's a Canadian bird, you couldn't possibly have seen one in Mr. Wilson's tree. Isn't that logical? Yes, Mr. Anderson. But I wonder what he was doing there. Now, Dennis, they're never seen in this state. Wind him up, Dad. We heard this other bird sing. All right, this will show you. He sounded just like that. Same kind of bird, all right. Here you are, dear. Oh. Thank you, my dear. How does your ankle feel this morning? Oh, fine, perfect. The Epsom salts took all the swelling out. <laughs> you shouldn't have jumped out of Dennis's tree house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't understand how he was able to describe a Canadian crested warbler. Why, there can't have been one in my backyard. Yet he was accurate in every detail. The purple throat, the touch of white about... Mark. What? Mark, be quiet. Be quiet. Very pretty. Someone must have a new canary. Shh. Get me the binoculars. <laughs> oh, it can't be. But it's true. How could I have ever doubted the boy? A Canadian crested warbler in George Wilson's backyard. Martha, I've got to call Mr. Timberlake right away. George, it's 7 o'clock in the morning. It's no time to call ahead of your bird watchers club. You don't understand the importance of this discovery. Why, he'd never forgive me if I didn't call him. But by the time he gets here, the bird will probably be gone. No, Martha. No, if Dennis saw him yesterday and he's here this morning, he'll stay. <laughs> it's that new feeder. The ad said it would do wonders. Where are you going? Well, I've decided to drive over and get Mr. Timberlake. In your pajamas? <laughs>
Yes, George, that is definitely a Canadian crested warbler. To the best of my knowledge, this is the first such sighting in this state. And to think it's happened to me. I'm going to get in touch with Mr. Pomeroy immediately. You mean the head of the state society? That's right. With Mr. Pomeroy's confirmation of this sighting, your name will be added to the immortals on the honor scroll. <sighs> it's something I never even dared hope for. Do you think Mr. Pomeroy will come all that distance? Oh, he'll be delighted. I'll wire him to fly in Saturday for a binocular session right here in your backyard. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. What if the warbler's flown away? Oh, that would be too bad. If I were you and had a chance to be added to the honor scroll, I'd see that everything is kept quiet and tranquil around here, so the bird won't be frightened away. Oh, I will, I will. <laughs> is it against the law to force a child to wear a gag in his mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Get away. That stuff you put up there will make the treehouse warmer all right, but we can't see anything in your yard. Yes, well, I'm just thinking of your comfort, Dennis. Well, we can't even see when your bird feeder's empty. Well, that's the price we have to pay. From now on, you two will take care of your birds. I'll take care of mine. What if you need some help? Uh, we'll just have to chance it. But I wanted you to be able to use the treehouse from your yard, too. The way you've got that stuff, your ladder won't work. Well, between now and Saturday, I'll be much too busy to use the treehouse anyway. But if you and Tommy want to be of real help to me, you'll be very quiet whenever you're in the treehouse. When were we ever noisy? <laughs> you suppose he's just lonesome for his home up in Canada? Uh-uh. He's real sick. And if he had a forehead, we could feel it. Maybe we could get him to stick out his tongue. Then we could tell if he's sick. I can tell he's sick without that. Maybe he's too sick to get anything to eat. Yeah, let's get him some food for Mr. Wilson's feeder. <laughs> George, try and cheer up. Cheer up? Great Scott, Martha. I haven't seen that bird in days. And in two hours, the president of the state society will be here. And I don't have a Canadian crested warbler to show him. Why don't you ask Dennis and Tommy to help you find the bird? They have sharp little eyes. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Martha. If the bird were here, I'd have seen it. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I've given Dennis strict orders to stay away from our yard while Mr. Timberlake and Mr. Pomeroy are here. There, it's all round. This make-believe bird will keep the baby birds company while we can't be up here in the treehouse. He <laughs> sure will. He'll even sing to them. I hope Mr. Wilson's company doesn't stay too long, though. If you turn this little doohickey, he sings a while, then waits a while, then sings some more. It makes one wind up last a long time. <laughs> now that the sick bird's feeling better, he'll probably enjoy it, too. I'll put it on the limb, Tommy. I forgot the words. I turned it on, Tommy. In a minute, it'll start singing. Okay, I'll feed the baby birds. Hello, George. Oh, Frederick. <laughs> Come in. Uh, c come in. <laughs> uh, this is the lucky man, Mr. Pomeroy, George Wilson, who first sighted the Canadian Crested Warbler. How do you do, Mr. Pomeroy? This is truly an honor, Mr. Wilson. I'm looking forward to capturing your discovery on film and on tape. Well, uh, this is very embarrassing, oh, sir. Oh, don't be I... so modest. Well, I mean, 
You've traveled 500 miles. Mr. Wilson, I'd travel 1,000 miles to see a Canadian crested warbler. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is... There he is. <laughs> Did you ever hear such purity of tone? Uh, uh, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Let's get out there. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Wilson. Your name will most certainly be inscribed on the honor scroll of the State Society. Oh, thank you, Mr. Pomeroy. And the fact that it's built a nest and is raising young may turn your backyard into a Canadian crested warbler sanctuary. Well, man does the best he can. I wonder if I could borrow your ladder. I'd like to come as close as possible so I can capture every delicate nuance of his song on my tape recorder. Of course, Mr. Pomeroy. I'll get it for you right away. Boy, they're still over there, Tommy. I wish they'd hurry up. That bird's gonna wind down pretty soon. Maybe we've never seen one before. Because the men are taking pictures of it while Mr. Wilson's getting a ladder. Hey, if Mr. Wilson climbs the ladder, maybe he'll wind the bird up for us. We can't ask him, Tommy. We promised we wouldn't make any noise. Well, we could call him over to the fence, then ask him. Uh-uh, Mr. Wilson's my friend. And I promise I wouldn't bother him while he had company. Oh, sorry, Mr. Pomeroy. There you are, sir. Thank you. Oh, I wouldn't get too close, Mr. Pomeroy. You might scare him away. <laughs> the bird is remarkably tame. Yes, he is, isn't he? I believe he'd sit on my finger. Oh, uh, I wouldn't try that, Mr. Pomeroy. Go ahead, Mr. Pomeroy. What harm can it do? <laughs> Why, this bird's a fake. <laughs> Wilson, what kind of a hoax are you trying to pull here anyway? I don't understand it. Well, I do only too well. Some people will pull anything, anything, just to get their name inscribed on the honor scroll. I, I swear to you, I don't know anything about this. Wilson, I'm dropping you from the membership rolls of the North Side Bird Watchers. Why, you can't do this to me. You're a disgrace to bird watching, Wilson. As far as I'm concerned, you can turn in your binoculars. But I swear to you, I saw a real bird. Oh, that's a likely story. Sure you did, Mr. Wilson. Oh, Dennis, be quiet. I haven't an idea in the world where this mechanical one came from. It came from Tommy's house. What did you say? It came from Tommy's house. Me and Tommy put it up in the tree because the real bird got sick, and we didn't want the babies to be lonesome. What's that? Come on, Timberlake, this is probably just another trick. No, no, wait, 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 please. <laughs> That's Dennis Mitchell, a fine little boy, intelligent, loyal, honest, and true. Oh, Dennis, little friend. Come over here and tell us all about the sick bird. The sick bird's up in our treehouse, Mr. Wilson. You deserve a great deal of credit, Mr. Wilson. If you hadn't had the proper foods in your feeder, the Canadian crested warbler wouldn't have pulled through. No, the real credit belongs to Dennis and Tommy. They're the ones who took care of the bird. <laughs> I'm just happy my feeder was there to help. Well, I think we can arrange to add three names to the honor scroll. Yours, Mr. Wilson, Dennis, and Tommy's. Jeepers, that's swell. I've never been on an honor scroll before. Is that good? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, tell me, Dennis, which of the foods did the crested warbler seem to like best? Was it the chopped raisins, the sunflower seeds, or the suet, or... He ate a little bit of everything you had, Mr. Wilson. Mostly, he seemed to like our peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs>